Uh, we now get to the part of the day where we talk to the really important people, our customers. So, um, it gives me great pleasure to have a chat with a proud Canberrian, uh, Mick Burgess. Uh, Mick is a, a mortgage customer with Craig Dads. Thank you, Craig, for introducing Mick and bringing him along today of Objective Wealth. Um, Craig's been also been a fantastic voice and advocate for our industry here in the ACT, so thank you for all your efforts, Craig. You've been extremely active. Um, Mick's story highlights what today's conversation is all about, why mortgage broking is crucial to the customer choice. Um, it's a bit hard, actually, because I used to own a uh, quite a large landscape company, Urban Contractors, and um, done a big job at ASIO, done my ass, lost about 30 years worth of work and lost nearly all my assets, except my house. Um, I had to fight for the house because I've got four families of my family living in that house. Anyway, um, I wanted to sort of keep in touch with people on a network. I must, my confidence was shot after losing the business. So I went to a networking breakfast and uh, a few wankers there and a few hobbyists and whatever. And Craig was one of the blokes there and I thought he was one of the wankers, really, to be honest. <laughs> I was pretty desperate and I thought, oh, I've already spoken to so many brokers and Craig came up and said, I think I'll be able to help you. And I said, here we go, another story you've got to go through. And he kept on ringing me after hours, coming around and see me, what situation, who knocked me back. And he told me that he did a quick run around and tried with peppers to get me through and they said they can't do it. And he said that was probably the last call. And I said, oh, let me, let me do some more homework for you. So I thought this bloke's a bit of a wanker, I reckon. He's really bloody after my money or something because I don't, I don't think he can really help me because he's getting tougher and tougher. Anyway, um... Craig come back to me and said, I, I, sp I spoke about your property. I live in Pialago, by the way. And um, there's an there's a agricultural clause in there. And uh, why the people want into the money? Because of that, that can be withdrawn off there. There's, you haven't got a 99-year lease and whatever. A lot of other crap. So Craig, out of the goodness of his heart, went and chased up, went, went to the, the lease people and they said, what do, you, what do you mean by agricultural lease? He said, well, you've got to have a lease to have a chook. I said, I've got six. That's well, I'm six times the amount. So um, anyway, he worked at it, worked on a 99 year lease, and said, so instead of borrowing all the money, borrow another extra 100 grand, you can pay the lease out. And he did all these things. He got some uh, lease agreements with some of my kids to, to, to show him more income for the property. And he made it work. He did a lot of hours. And he, uh, there's no way Craig made any money out of me. I know that from me. And, and I. From the bottom of my heart, I thank him so much. We, the deal was initially declined at the head of credit with Pepper, um, and they just said, "Look, we don't, we won't take the property." And I, I, I sort of, to use industry terms, I engaged with the risk. I said to them, I went back and I said, "Okay, I'll get that. I agree with you. You know, you might have a problem here, but if we lend it, if you say cap it at say sixty percent LVR rather than eighty, which." Anyone, any of the major banks that do 80, so they were already saying they wouldn't do mortgage insurance on such a property. If you do it at 60%, then there should be a deal here. And at the time, we were looking at 40%, and then we needed extra money. We had to pay out the liquidators with their agreement with the ATO. We had to pay out um, the lease clause, which was an odd thing that the lenders just didn't understand. And we get that all the time. We've got to explain PSS. We've got to explain all of the particularities of our local situation. You know, I had one guy who was buying an investment property to you know, put his kids into it here in Canberra, and he was on the PSS. And when my state bank in Tasmania were assessing it, they're going, how much super does he have? And I said, well, he doesn't have super. He's got an ongoing revenue stream from his superannuation, and this is how it works. And if he passes on, then 60%, 66% of it will go to his missus. You know? So we were able to engage and explain to the credit assessors about the particular circumstances that we have. You will not get that on finder.com. Right? You won't get it on Google. We don't live in some sort of real economic world where the ideal situation is. The ideal situ I've been struggling to try to work out how we could build a better model, and I don't know that there is one. Right? That's, that's what I've struggled with, and I understand the politics of it, and I understand that because Hain had his Royal Commission and they've come out with this recommendation, we're now in this room saying, what's wrong with the current model? The current model allows the good brokers to do a really good job and be there and be the local branch manager. Any new model I think will be inferior. I'd love to work on a new one with anyone who, who can come up with a better one. Sorry.